Hi, and welcome to the HEV Design Suite. To launch the Design Suite, go up to the Design Suite menu and select HEV Design Suite. There are eight different templates, although you'll quickly notice that there are two main groups. The first group deal with linear motors and the second group deal with nonlinear motors. I'll launch all of the linear motor ones so that we can have a look to see what each one is. To start with, let's look at the difference between the traction motor and generator design suites. We can see that the traction motor design suite just deals with the traction motor aspect of an HEV drivetrain. The same goes for the generator design suite. It just deals with the generator portion of an HEV drivetrain. Use either of these design suites if you just want to do a simple simulation for either the traction motor or generator aspect of a drivetrain. The remaining two design suites deal with complete powertrain system simulations. The plug-in HEV design suite is different from the HEV design suite. In the HEV design suite, we can see that the engine can provide power to the vehicle and to the generator. In the plug-in HEV design suite, we can see that the engine can only provide power to the generator. Also, we can see that in the HEV powertrain design suite, there is a DC-DC converter between the battery and the DC bus between the generator and traction motor. And in the plug-in design suite, we can see that that DC-DC converter is not there. Let's look at the HEV powertrain design suite in more detail. What is this schematic? Well, it's actually a user input form. Opening up the different components, we can see that there are many different parameters for us to input to define this HEV powertrain. Let's look at some of these in a little more detail. We can see that the engine is defined by an engine speed and a torque limit to the vehicle. We can see that the generator, the first parameters are defining a PMSM motor. And the last parameters are actually defining a control structure for it at a top level. We can see a switching frequency being defined, and then we can see a current loop sampling frequency, voltage loop sampling frequency, and crossover frequencies for both, both of those control loops being defined. The same applies for the traction motor, but instead of a voltage loop, the outer loop is a speed loop. There's also a motor speed reference. This will be the speed of the vehicle when we simulate. Then we can look at the DC-DC converter and the DC bus. It's important to note in the DC bus that the minimum DC bus voltage is actually the minimum expected steady state voltage, not the minimum expected transient or short duration voltage. The DC-DC converter is defined by these parameters and the battery is defined by these parameters. This battery model is defining a lithium ion battery. The vehicle is also just defined by a load here. The mode control defines the operation of the simulation. Clicking on help, we can see the different modes that are available to us. We can see that zero is the battery charge mode and the default value five is full power mode. So the engine, the motor and the battery are all contributing to the motion of the vehicle. Now let's generate a PSIM schematic. To do that, go back to the design suite and hit the generate circuit option. You will need to, to select a folder to put all of the generated files in. For each aspect of the HEV powertrain, a subcircuit file will be generated. And those all need to be saved in an appropriate location. I've selected the HEV video folder. This is now a PSIM schematic that we can simulate. I'll start the simulation now, and we can go over the other aspects of the 
circuit. The first thing to look at is the parameter file. Here we can see the top portion has parameters from user input. These are all of the parameters that we put into PSIM from that top level design suite dialog box. We can see the DC DC converter has been defined. We can see the mode selector at the top is set to five as we originally put. And we can also change this from this menu as well if we want it to run in a different mode of operation. As we keep going down, we encounter the parameters from calculation menu. Here we can see that for the generator, the D and Q axis control loops have been closed with PI controllers. The voltage loop has been closed with the PI controller as well. The phase margin has been calculated for each one of these control loops. For the traction motor, the same thing has happened. Uh, the ID and IQ control loops have been closed with PI controllers and along with the speed controller. The DC DC converter has controllers defined as well, depending on if it's bucking or boosting from the battery or from the battery to the DC bus. It is important to note that the parameters from calculation do not refresh if you change the input parameters. So putting in a new motor will require you to go back to the top level input dialog and to regenerate a new schematic. So some user discretion is required when changing parameters in the user parameter section. If it will have an effect on the control structure of the schematic, you will need to regenerate. So let's go over the schematic that's been generated by the design suite. Each one of these blocks is actually a subcircuit. The name of the subcircuit appears down in the bottom left hand corner. This is the traction motor is subcircuit 13. The generator is subcircuit 17 and the DC-DC converter is subcircuit 24. Let's have a look at some of these subcircuits. So I've opened up some of the subcircuits and we can see how different aspects have been modeled in PSIM. The engine is in the top left here and we can see how that has been modeled in PSIM, um, making use of the electrical mechanical interface uh, block. The same again with the load block, um, which is representing the vehicle in, in this case. Again, making use of the mechanical electrical interface block. The generator block here is a little more interesting. Um, we can see the top circuit is the uh, power stage. So here is the PMSM generator, which is pulling values from the top level parameter file. The um, The IGBT in this case uh, is being pulled from the thermal module, which is an Infineon six pack IGBT. And this sub circuit up here is a heat sink model uh, combining the conduction switching losses of the IGBTs and the diodes. Down at the bottom here, we can see the uh, gating signals come from uh, this space vector PWM generator over here. And we've implemented max torque parameter and field weakening control. Uh, inside of some of these blocks are other subcircuits, in this case the PI controllers for the IDIQ loops. And in, inside of this block uh, is actually a control module for voltage control of the PMSM. There's also the DC-DC converter here. We can see that the gating signals Q1 and Q2 are controlled by the state of the uh, energy flow. If the battery needs to charge or if the battery needs to discharge. 
and these are all controlled by these various blocks and by these variables here. The last circuit to look at is the traction motor, which is very similar to the generator as one would expect. The only real difference is that it's got a speed control at the front end here, which is the PI controller for the speed control. And the PMSM is pulling its values for the uh, motor instead of the generator. Otherwise, it's still using uh, IGPT from the, the uh, thermal module, and it has a heat sink model as well. And still implementing max torque parameter and field weakening control. Looking at the simulation results, I have already selected some of the waveforms to look at. On the top level, we have the three phase um, uh, currents for the traction motor. Uh, the next screen down, we have vehicle torque, motor torque, and engine torque. We can see the green line of the engine torque being held constant at 100 Newton meters and the motor supplying the difference to the vehicle. Uh, we have the statement of charge here. So we have the um, clearly showing that the battery is discharging. We have, uh, I have here the DC bus, so we can see during startup the phenomenon that the DC bus undergoes before settling down to steady state operation. And then we have the speed of the vehicle as it accelerates and reaches 2000 RPM in about 0.1 seconds. These are only a, a few of, this, of the signals that are available to look at. We can, uh, the full host of signals that are built in to look at are, are, are here. Uh, everything from losses on the IGBTs and temperatures of diodes and, um, and switches. And of course you can add your own signals. Um, these of course are, are working with uh, sub-circuit notation. So S17, S16 means, in, so the top level sub-circuit is 17, and then inside of that there's sub-circuit 16. Of course you can add your own or use on ours that are built in. The circuit uh, is can be modified. Bear in mind the parameters that are, are controlling it um, are inside of the system parameter file and that if you start editing things here or adding things that can change the control scheme and control parameters you will need to exercise a little bit of caution there. Um, but look for more detailed videos on different aspects of the HEV system in future videos. And thanks for watching.